Oi oi! Welcome back to Bruce Like Mario 2019 for episode number 51 of the Barry McLaren career mode. Today's episode, Classica San Sebastian, and a recap of the transfers. Uh, actually, no, a recap, sorry, of the mid season. Um, and then we'll move to uh, the Volta in the next episode. We have to rush this because I'm extremely late on my schedule, although I've been posting every two days. But yeah, I'm late. So, get prepared to be overloaded with PCM content, with Bahrain at least, in the upcoming days. That's all I can say. Uh, but yeah, we'll start with the Classica San Sebastian. Pino is still on this fitness peak, it will soon run out, uh, but we should be fine. Where's Ghana annoyed? Alright, fuck off then. Uh, who's not annoyed? Alberto Pichol. Could Actually, could I use Herman Penstein? I could use Penstein a bit more than I think. Uh, I could use Lutsenko as well. We're going to use Lutsenko instead of Jan Tratnik. Good. And Marco Halla, last his winner, will be there. But yeah, without further ado, let's go. Alright, it's so a minus one for Thibaut. Despite uh, ending the Tour de France on a high note, uh, he starts today with a minus one. Lutsenko with a plus one, though. Oh, my, look at them stats. Ah, oh, this is filthy. Um, Horridge, which is wearing, uh, who is wearing the Slovenian jersey for the first time this year and actually the first time in his career with Bahrain at least. Uh, Marco Allen not champion, neither is Garza Cortina, we know that it's Carlos Barbero. Uh, and I think nobody else here has a distinctive jersey. Guerrero, we saw him on the Tour de France. Mühlberger, we saw him on the Tour de France. Anyone else? We've got Emil Slipins, but we saw him on the Tour de France. Um, I think NC-wise, that is about it. All right, all right, all right. We'll just take a, a, another look at this kit for Thibaut Pinot, which we haven't really seen on the Tour de France uh, because he was mainly wearing either the green or the yellow jersey, but it is a very, very sick design. We all love this jersey. Um, all right, let's just take a look at the competition on this race. We've got, we're the main favorites with Lutsenko and Van Barle, Godu, Mike Woods, Isagiri, Yates. Okay. Izaguirre ended up the tour in quite a high manner, so we need to be careful about him. But I think, overall, Lutsenko can get the win. Well, we've got a four-man breakaway. We're going to take a look at who's up there. We have four uh, Alpes and Phoenix. Lezen, we have Robert Rez Oh, my Robert. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, them stats are not good. Really not good. Um, I think that's Hector Saez for Kaoral. And finally, we've got Rekita for CCC. I do not know his first name. As ne I, I've never seen this rider ever in my life. Uh, but yeah, the peloton is navigating six minutes behind. Uh, multiple teams relaying at the front, but not really one taking the lead of the peloton. It's just there to uh, well, prevent the peloton uh, from being 17 minutes down. But yeah, for now, everything is looking decent. We're going we're gonna to put Rafael Valls on protection on Lutsenko uh, and... Uh, Mohoric will protect Mr. Thibaut Pinot. Alright, we're going to start the uh, Alto Mendy and Marco Halla will not retain his title. He is currently 10 minutes behind. Um, he just couldn't hold on the rhythm in, um, in the Alto de Arlage, which means that we have six riders able to fight for the win today. Most likely, he will have two or three. Uh, it'll be Garza Cortina, Lutsenko, and Thibaut Pinot. We still have the breakaway just up the road. There it is, uh, but not for long. Alright, we're going to start the final climb. The climb of Murgil Tontora, this usual climb in uh, Classican Sebastian, 20% max radiant. It is Henman Pensteiner currently leading the peloton, then it will be up to Matej Mohoric, and then I've made a choice. It's going to be Thibaut Pinot leading Lutsenko and Garza Cortina. Um, Garza Cortina is there in case of a sprint, kind of like the same uh, disposition as we had last season with Marco Halla. Uh, I could have, I could use, you know, Rafael Valles, if you can stay on, I'd be great. Uh, but it looks like Mohoric is already creating some sort of chaos. Okay. Well, I mean, we might as well go 99 at this point. We might as well just attack. We might as well just attack. We've made some, we've made some, some big damage. Jeez. <laughs> All right. Well, there goes Thibaut Pinot, I guess. There goes the, fre the the winner of the Tour de France, Thibaut Pinot attacking with Alexei Lutsenko and Garza Cortina in the wheel. All right, you lot, chase me down, because sure, I'm sure as hell not going to pace. 
I'm sure Rizal never going to pace. I think yeah, I, th I think the win is uh, in El Bag, uh, in the backpack, uh, in my rucksack, uh, rucksack, wherever you want the, the the win to be. It's there. It's there. Um, is Aguirre starting to uh, get a, a, a bit uh, a a bit too much here? Yeah. I, I don't like that. No, not a big fan. Matei, take the wheel of whoever you want to take the wheel of. Well, I mean, sure, take the wheel of Izagiri. That, that works. Uh, and it shall be a one and two. That's for sure. Potentially three with either Pino or Matei Mohoric. We're going to see everyone start the sprint. Uh, Pino won't hold on for third. It's going to be third place for Ivan David Godu. No, Ivan Sosa. Pino in, in fifth, Mohoric in seventh. But it's a one-two. For Baron McLaren on the Classic and Sebastian Garza Cortina ahead of Alexei Lutenko. Alright, I mean it's an easy stage to win. It's it's an easy classic. And it's a 1-2 for Baron McLaren to round up uh, this Classic and Sebastian. Good! Now that we're going to be able to take a look at uh, all the results uh, in the first half of the season, we've set up ourselves quite nicely here. Alright, so... Uh, we are on the 31st of July. This is the final day to renew the contract with the sponsor. And uh, the day after that, you can start to make your transfers and shit. I'm going to give you the save today. So, you will be able to pick the sponsor you want. It will be either Bahrain, Omega Pharma, or Iberdrola. For the sake of the save, I will uh, continue with Bahrain. But first of all, I need to make a copy, otherwise <laughs> your save is ruined. Okay, all right, so what do we start with? Do we start with our team? Sure, we'll start with our team. Right, so who won a lot? Not Arashiro, I'm guessing. Uh, indeed, he's got no wins, but we'll still take a look at his uh, season. The 36-year-old former rider for B-Box, who finished zero. Well, he didn't finish, I guess, the Rodoxteni, although I did. I know he did. Uh, but yeah, not the best of year for uh, the Japanese rider. Moving on to Carlos Barbero, I think it's one win, and it's the Spanish Championships, indeed it is, but it's also 15th on Paro 15th in Grand Real Game, 20th of Le Flash and then 14th of the Stradibianque. As a teammate, I'd say it's a decent season for the all-rounder, Carlos Barbero, if you were to listen to his former team and TT. Moving on to Phil Bauhaus. One stage, the first stage of the Tour of Oman and the point certification, a podium on the stage of Murcia, third on Eichborn Frankfurt and a podium on the Tour de Pologne. Not the best of season either for uh, Phil Bauhaus last year. He didn't win this year, he's got one dub, uh, but he will be on the Vuelta to try and get a few sprints here and there. We have Alberto Betiol, a good season, very good season from him. No wins whatsoever, but a top 10 on the Tour de France on the stage, second of the Ronde, third of Paroubet, 11th of Grand Valgame. 19th of La Fashion, 2nd of Tradebianche, 4th of Dars de Blanderen, and 2nd of the Time Troll uh, in Italy. I'd say it's 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 a good season. It's a very good season. 2nd and 3rd of Paroubet and the Ronde, especially for me, it's it's very good. Because if you sign with me on the Cobbles, you know for sure you're not going to win. Moving on to Peyo Bilbao, who won the first stage of the Giro wearing the, the, um, the pink jersey for two days. He finished ninth. Very solid Giro for Peyo Bilbao this season. Fifth of his national championships. He won the Vuelta Murcia with a stage. 17th in Normandy, best climber of the Catalonia Tour. Ninth of the Mont Ventoux Daniel Challenge. Good season as well for Peyo Bilbao. Last year he did the Tour de France and the Giro. This year he's going to do the, Tour de, the Giro and the Vuelta. Hopefully we'll see him in a good shape on uh, his national roads and hopefully he'll be able to help Mikel Landa towards uh, a second Grand Tour, uh, a second Vuelta back-to-back -back, actually for uh, for Mikel Landa. Greg Gabole, yeah, same as Arashiro, N nothing to, uh, there's just nothing to say, there's just nothing to say for Greg Gabole. Eros Kapeki, there's just nothing to say, cheers. Next up, Damiano Caruso, he won Tirreno Adratico, and the point classification in an incredible fashion. We all remember that stage. Uh, one of the maddest stages on PCM. He finished fifth in Catalonia. Tenth of the Romandie. Tenth of UA Tour. He won the Tour of Oman with the best, uh, best climber classification. He won the Giro di Sicilia with a stage. Uh, no, sorry. He came second of the Giro di Sicilia with a stage. He won the Trofeo Serra de Tramuntana. He finished second in Yoseta. But then again, on the Giro, he wasn't there. He, he cracked on the Giro. And he just didn't have the legs. Sixth of the Bastion is something we have to keep in mind, though, for the 33-year-old uh, 
as we now move to Sonny Colbrelli. No wins whatsoever for Colbrelli, unlike last year, where he had won three stages on the Tour de F on the um, Giro, two on Bats Country, uh, and some stages early on this year. Nothing for the 31-year-old uh, sprinter, although he has more competition than he did last season. Uh, solid season, but slightly disappointing for uh, for Sonny. Moving on to Scott Davis, third of the national championships, second of the time trial uh, for the 25-year-old. Decent, but I can't really do anything else with, with him, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, we're kind of stuck to uh, two days with Scott Davis. Chun Kai Feng, sadly no wins, but the one will come, I just promise. Filippo Ganna, national champion, second of the Adriatica Yonissa uh, race, fifth of the Tour du Rwanda, du Rwanda, top 10 on the stage of the Tour de France. I mean, when you don't do many time trials, it's tough to win stages if you're Filippo Ganna. Uh, and there's only one he's done that wasn't on the Tour de France, and he's won it. So, yeah, nice one. Garza Cortina, one stage on the Dauphiné, third of Milan Sonomo, sixth of the Ronde, eleventh of the Bing Bang Tour, second in Grand Game, winner of the Classic Ars Sebastian, winner of the Ars of Landeren, eighth of the Strade Bianche, thirteenth in Algarve. Maybe not as much or as many wins as last season, but trust me, this man is on a mission. Marco Halla, we resigned him last season on just a, a mad decision because he had won the Classica Sebastian. This year he's not there. 13th of Paroubet, 12th of Grand Valley Game. Meh. I mean, his objective was the Classica Sebastian and he, he finished 10 minutes behind. Although I think the 62 Mountain probably wasn't a, a, a great help. But yeah, not the best of years for Marco Halla. As we move to Mikel Lamba, second of the Giro. Nearly came close to winning it. But second, two stages. A stage on the Basque Country, fifth of the GC, ninth in Tirreno, fourth in Murcia. Three stages on the Tour du Ronda, but finished tenth. How the fuck did that happen? How did that happen? Oh, I remember. Okay, I, I'm, I, I know, I know, I know. Second on the Moro 2, third on the Boucle de l'Olne. Uh, he was injured on the national championships, but he was going. To, he's going to come back actually for the Vuelta. Hopefully, he'll be in a decent shape. Lutsenko, ninth of the Tour de France, three days yellow jersey, many podiums, many top tens, an incredible tour all round for Lutsenko, who's won a stage on the Tour de Suisse, the stage of uh, San Gotardo, finishing sixth of the GC, sixteenth in Paris, fourteenth of the Ronde, twentieth of the Etroy, nineteenth of the Amstel, second of, La of Saint Sebastian, first in Strade Bianche. 6th of Dazon Van winning uh, uh, both his national championships, 3rd in Oman, 3rd in the Yorkshire, winner of the Tour de Ronda, plus 3 stage. It's a very, very solid year for Alexei Lutsenko. We move to Matej Mohoric, 1 stage on the Giro, the cobbled one, winner of Milano San Remo, 3rd of the Down Under, 2 stages on the Tour de Suisse, champion of his country, technically TT champion, but the game robbed me. Winner of the Giro della Penio, 3rd of the Vars of Lenoren, 9th of the Strade Bianche, 14th in the Cadillac Construction Road Race, 7th in San Sebastian. Very good year once again for Matteo Mohoric. Matteo Moschetti, no wins, a second place on the uh, GP Beras e Sierra d'Estrella. I don't know how, knowing that there's a mountain stage, but it's all good. Uh, some top 10s, some podiums here and there on the Giro, uh, but no wins whatsoever for the 24-year-old. Hinoch Mulubran, nothing, uh, was meant to like be my sprinter on some races during the Tour de France, but he's injured, uh, so big L. Jacob Nizzolo, no wins either, same as Colbrelli and, um, and Moschetti. Uh, I think I should have gone for one big sprinter uh, instead of like four good, uh, but yeah, no dubs, some podiums here and there, some top tens, but not great for Nizzolo. Mark Padden, he's got his two wins, Canton d'Argo and the National TT. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. The podium on the Tour de France nearly got that win, uh, but he got beaten by Philippe. Eighth on the Adriatica Yonitsa race, sorry. Sixth in Liosetta, ninth in the Tour de la Provence. All right. Hermann Pensteiner, 14th in Catalonia, 20th in the Basque Country, third and second of his national championships. Uh, no wins, some podiums, but no wins for Pensteiner, who will be on the Vuelta. Thibaut Pinot. One stage on the Tour de France, the point classification, but mainly first place of said Tour. And a sheer amount of top 10s. Uh, that's 11 top 10s, 5 podiums, and a win. That's 16 stages he's finished in the top 10 out of 21. That's mental. 
that's properly mental. Three stages in Paris-Nice, sadly, not enough to get that win. Two stages plus the win in Catalonia, second of the Dauphiné with the post certification, fifth in the Classic Saint-Sébastien, second of the UA Tour with the stage, national champion, second of the ITT, winner of the Valenciana Tour with the stage, winner of the Tour de France with the stage, second of the Road d'Occitanie with the stage, third of the Mont Ventoux, incredible year for Thibaut Pinot for his first season outside of FDJ. I mean, yeah, he's won the Tour, so it's basically the best year of his life. Work pools, he got injured quite a lot. Uh, he finished 16 in Oman, five, a fifth of the Adria Unita race. Actually, he just came back. He came back after the Tour de France uh, and two podiums on Catalonia, but that's about it. Maximilian Schachmann, three stages on the Tour. liege bastogne liege a stage in Paris-Nice. Amstel, Flesh Wallon, National Championships, Time Troll and Road Race. GP Beras et Serra Estrella. I mean, three stages on the Tour. The, the, the Flanders uh, hat trick or treble <laughs> is just mad. It's just a great year from Schachmann again. Jan Tratnek, second of his national championships and eighth of Rwanda. Yeah, but he's a good teammate here and there, so I can't really blame him. Matteo Trentin, winner of the Down Under of two stages. That's the best way you can start a season. Second of the Bing Bong Tour, winner of Go Van Game, third in the KDL events, fifth of the Strade Bianche, second of Darts of Landeren. 10th of Eichborn Frankfurt, 11th of the Boucle de Lune, a podium on the, tour, on the Giro and 5th of Milan Sanomo. It's a good year for the former sprinter of Quickstep and the uh, European champion, a uh, former European champion. Rafael Valls, yeah, nothing, just, just nothing. 14th of the Tour of Poland, but yeah. Stephen Williams, a stage on the Volta Catalunya. I completely forgot about that. I forgot that that had happened. 11th of the Tour of Yorkshire, 9th of the Adria Unica race. Uh, I think he's going to be on the Vuelta. No, he wasn't on the Giro, right? I don't know, but apparently his objective is the UCL World Championships. Alright, that's it for our team. Uh, we're just going to make a, a little look. Uh, if we go Archives... Nope, I've clicked on Highlights. Actually, I wanted to click on Highlights. Um, as of now, because there's some races you haven't seen, uh, the, the races the, the, you, that I just literally simmed because I couldn't give a shit about them. Um, what races did we not race? We didn't race Basque Country. Buchmann won it. Interesting. Bernal won in Romandie. Uh, and Higuita won in Pologne. Big up. Uh, World Championships haven't been done. National Championships, Mikel Carbel won in Denmark, Owen Dole in the UK, Pino in France, Barbero in Spain, Charmaine Germany, Dumoulin in the Netherlands, Tunes in Belgium, and Nicola Conch in Italy. Uh, monuments, we all saw them. Other classics, Bing Bang Tours, uh, Marc Saro, true. Trentin Charmaine, Charmaine, and Cortina. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. That, nevertheless, will be the end of this video if you've enjoyed it then please do leave it down below don't forget that in the description you can take my save and you can do whatever you want with it if you want to sign i don't know who's useless uh i don't know but if you want to sign a guy with 50 razor 50 rated please have your fun uh but i shall see you for the next episode which will be the start of the vuelta in the meantime stay safe my name is ben Bako. it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you guys and goodbye Pull up, pull up in the cold, I'm bleeding. But the mother man need feeding. I don't wanna go bombi. Them I don't know what I do when I go from bleeding. Leading the pack in black and I'm on with a bad. Snapping with a phone and dab. Boss up a man with a duster. Put him in the drip and sip blockbuster.